Hey bookaholics and welcome back to a vlog! I have not done a vlog in so long. Actually I have. I've vlogged two vlogs now that I have scrapped. I vlogged for Lightfall in December, scrapped that, and I vlogged for my Great Gatsby week in January, also scrapped that. So we'll see if this one sees the light of day. But welcome to a Polarthon vlog! Yay! I love Polarthon. It's uh, one of the readathons that I take part in every year. It's dedicated to polar fantasy. It was created by Jade over at Jade Bay Reads. I will link Jade and the announcement video and everything down below. Polarthon will have already gone, but at least you can understand what I'm talking about. So I don't have to go through what Polarthon is. That being said, I am going to be on Team Reindeer. You will see in a moment why. But yeah, I'm really excited to be getting into this vlog. There is construction happening on the other side of this room. So if if you can hear stuff you you didn't okay just shh, just pretend that all is fine pretend it's just a really big bee okay i've had too much coffee already this morning it's gonna come halfway anyway chocolate coffee candle let's get into the books that i'm going to be reading for this vlog first up we're going to go through the books that were actually on my TBR on my February TBR. I will leave that linked as well for anyone who wants to know. But I am going to be reading The Reindeer People by Megan Lindham. This is a pen name of Robin Hobbs and it is a duology that is set in, I imagine, a fictionalized Alaska. I say specifically Alaska and not just kind of like Northern America because she did live in Alaska. We're following a woman named Tilu who lives on the outskirts of this village in Alaska. She's kind of like a hedge witch essentially. She's a healer. She's you know very kind and called upon for like blessing births etc. And she lives with her somewhat ethereal and peculiar child. And they catch the attention of this like old man who whose magic smells foul to Tilu and he becomes obsessed with them. So then ensues a chase across this vast and dangerous landscape to try and escape this man. On the one hand I am very very excited to be getting into this series because Robin Hobb is the author of my favourite series which is The Realm of the Earthlings. Absolutely loved it. Have you watched up my wrap up contents lately though? I DNF'd her other series. I DNF'd the Soldier Sun series. It's somewhere. It's somewhere. I, yeah it's up here. You can't see it. I DNF'd the so Soldier Sun series. It is a soft DNF. I do intend to give it another go when I've got a bit more distance from the Realm of the Elderlings because I finished the Realm of the Elderlings in 2022, tried to read Soldier Sun in 2023. So there were definitely going to be comparisons between the two. So that might have been to the detriment of the other series. That being said, I DNF'd that series. So now I'm a bit concerned about these on the one hand, you know, especially because it's Megan Linda. It's not Robin Hobb. Like she says she uses different pen names because she has different writing styles. On the flip side to that though, we also do have a mama as the protagonist. Now, if you guys don't know, fantasy mothers are literally like one of my favorite things. If you go through my top 10, so you've got Realm of the Elderlings, which has several mothers in it, and like the further into the series you go, but like Live Ships has two maternal perspectives in it. Like, I love, I love fantasy mamas. Then you've got The Broken Earth, which is literally about a mother trying to get her daughter back. You've got The Chronicles of the Witch Queen, which is about a mother trying to protect her son. If you go through my favourite standalones, you've got A Woman of the Sword, which is literally about dealing with motherhood in a fantasy setting. And The Sword of Kaigen, which is one of the two perspectives is of a mother. So there's a, there's a thing going here that I like reading about mothers. Because I'm a mother, I assume. So I understand their motivations. Like even when they make incredibly irrational decisions, I can completely understand because when your maternal instinct kicks in, the rest of the world ceases to exist. So I can really empathize with these characters and I love that. So there is hope that, you know, reading a Megan Linden book, so a Robin Hobb book with a mother as the protagonist is going to really, really tickle my fancy. So I'm, I'm really excited for these and that's my priority. However, I have actually been reading loads digitally. If you saw my January wrap up, I actually read like an even split. So I read like half of the books that I read in January. Well, just minus one because it was an odd number. But like basically half of the books that I read in January were digitally which is just a revelation for me because I don't normally read that many. But I haven't been having anywhere near as many migraines, so I can definitely get away with it this time. Therefore, I would like to also have a digital book on the go because digital books are great for A, if I do ever for some reason leave the house, which seems counterintuitive. Why would I leave the house? But also, it's things like if I'm just sitting and chilling with my kids, then 
for some reason sitting there and reading digitally is easier for me it feels more mobile like i can just like be making sandwiches and reading on my phone a lot easier than i can in a physical book so i've been reading a lot more digitally so i want some digital books therefore because it is polathon i have decided i want to try and get to the ice fjord series by zaya Feli, which consists of teeth and claws this is one i'm really excited for i really liked the is it iron break Iron Breakers, possibly Iron Breakers, series by Zaya Feli, starting with Stag's Run. I read them, um, God, it must be like maybe three years ago now. Really liked that series. So I am very excited to read something else by Zaya Feli. I first discovered Zaya Feli from my friend Kaz, who I will leave it linked down below. If you need weirdly specific or really niche or super underhyped books, go check out Kaz. Like she's just, she's an incredible person when it, well, she's an incredible person. But when it comes to recommending series that you won't have heard anywhere else, go check out Kaz. That being said, heard with Zaya Feli first through her. This is an adult series, I believe, but it has, Zaya Feli has a really, really approachable writing style, which basically means that her books are also sometimes shelved as YA because I read Iron Breakers thinking, oh, it's going to be like new adult. It's really not. It's an adult series that just has really approachable writing. So I'd say this is probably going to be the same given the shelving choices that it has on Goodreads. And we are following two boys, one of whom lives in a village and I think that he's a magic wielder. And then we have this other boy who gets lost in the forest and he is, he can bring ravens back to life. So this other boy opens up the wards that protect his village to let this boy through. And when the boy comes through, a creature from this boy's nightmares follows and then i believe that we skip to like six years later and we see the kind of repercussions on both of these boys lives so i am really excited to get into this series i do believe that it has like slight norse mythology inspiration or or at least uh viking inspiration i mean it's got a fjord in it and it's got norse runes on the cover that's kind of what i'm going off but yeah i'm really excited so i've got four books on the cbr for this week i'm hoping because neither of desire of any ones are very long and for fantasy these are really short how long are you not you i'm not asking you how long you are 348 so again not not all that long for fantasy and it looks like wolf's brother is even shorter 266 so basically the two together just about amount to my normal reading so i should be fine and again the sciofelli ones are not very long either so i've already talked way too long for just an introduction so once i have started the reindeer people i will check in when i start the reindeer people so i can give you like first impressions and i can give you kind of my expectations then i'll probably check in halfway and then i'll check in at the end and i will do the same with any of the other books as well first thing in the morning I would look more of a mess and then sort myself out but I actually look more of a mess now so yay but I have started two books actually as it turns out I have started The Reindeer People I am 54 pages into this one so I thought I would go over initial thoughts and expectations because obviously this book isn't very long so my usual like 100 page mark check-in doesn't really apply in this one this one i think is going to be rather slow moving i think vibes wise it has a lot of crossover with the wolf and the whale by jordana max brodsky which i read in december and i really liked it has a very prosaical writing style the writing style is very different from the realm of the elderling so much so that i can like mentally consider it a different author and i think it makes sense that she uses different pen names because i think if you picked up realm of the elderlings and then picked this one up straight away and expected something of a similar ilk you would be rather not necessarily disappointed because it's a well-written story but if you are looking for more realm of the elderlings 
then this is not going to scratch that itch. The vibes are very different. One thing that I can say for Robin Hobb is that her pacing is incredibly slow moving. She takes you gently along. She's not quite someone that's going to instantly give you loads of information. She's not someone who is going to set up the action quickly. I'm 54 pages in. We've had a couple of like events that have happened, but nowhere near the scope of what I suspect is going to come from what I've read of the synopsis. There are more characters in here than I expected as well. I, I didn't expect that we would be getting as many people in the story. I thought it would be a, a much more narrow cast. I thought that we would only be getting a couple of POVs, so it was very nice to be getting more characters because I really appreciate Robin Hobb's character work. So I, I thought that that would be something I'd be concerned about with her having a very limited cast, which is not the case. So I really appreciate that. I think this book is going to essentially be part one in the series. I don't think it's going to be two separate books that comprise a duology. I think that it is a book that found an organic and good place to stop and then the next book continues is what I am expecting. I could be completely wrong. The writing style in this is much more prosaical than I am used to with Hob and it's very nicely written. It has a very interesting tone. Like I said, tone-wise it does compare for me to The Wolf and the Whale, which was one of my favourite standalones of last year. So I really appreciate that. So for the most part, I'm, I'm really enjoying my time with this so far. I'm excited to continue and it's definitely something new and it's not me just being able to compare everything all of the time to Realm of the Elderlings which is what I wanted from a new book by this author. So so far so good not very far in but excited to continue and then I have also started Teeth which is the first book in the Icefjord series by Zaya Feli and this one very much like the other thing that I've read by Zaya Feli so the opposite going here is that it is very true to her writing style everything that I enjoyed about Ironbreakers series. I really need to look that up. <laughs> Everything I loved about the Ironbreaker series still holds true here, where it has a really fast pace, really easy to root for characters, get straight into it. There's no fat that needs trimming on these books at all. They are very, very concise. They get straight into it. They're very engaging. They're very compulsively readable. I remember by the time I got to the third book in the Ironbreaker series, I just basically binge read the whole thing in like a day or a day and a half or something. So I am wondering if that's going to be the case with these and I'm going to end up running out of books or maybe they will take me maybe the, the the Megan Linden ones will take me a while but as it currently stands I'm having a really nice time because the two opposite things you know we've got the slow moving gentle lyrical prose that you have with the Megan Linden one and then we have the fast pacing really engaging sucks you in instantly stories by Zaya Feli. So the two are like depending on my mood I'll lean for one or the other. So I'm really liking that and they're also even though they're both like icy settings and slightly secluded settings, historical settings, I am not finding that the two are going to mesh anytime soon simply because of the way that they are told are so so distinct that there is no real way for me to easily confuse them. There might be a detail here or there that I might sw swap over maybe but as it currently stands there's going to be no conflict in my brain distinguishing the two, which I'm also very glad about. So, so far, a good start. Hi, it's uh, the next day. Good morning. And I am now 142 pages into The Reindeer People. And I haven't really got any more thoughts. It's only been 50 pages. So I don't feel overly compelled to update you on this one. However, I am also now halfway through. I'm reading it on my ebook, so it's like 50. 1% of the way into teeth. I am really enjoying that. I really like the way that Zaya Feli does character work and I really like the interpersonal relationships between the characters. The world building in this one is also really interesting because it definitely has a setting that I've seen before but I think that Zaya Feli is playing with it in a way that I really like. So yeah, I'm having a good time with that one. It's living up to be pretty much what I expected of the book to be. Be. I think I will probably go into more detail when I am finished with the first book because obviously this is going to be quite long because there's four books and the other two being sequels I'm going to run out of things to say that aren't spoilery. So I will chat a little bit more about characters, arcs and world building when I get to sequels because right now I am going to have a play with my TBR jars and I thought I would bring you along for the ride. Specifically the ones I'm going to be fucking about with are my series jar, my digital jar and my main TBR jar. Basically I would like 
another jar. But it's getting too many jars and I'm not gonna be pulling from all of them. It gets overly convoluted. So I am going to redesign their purposes instead. I currently have been making myself a self-published TBR of series I want to binge. I really like binge reading series. That's why my priority jar is always my series jar. It's my favorite thing to do is just binge read series. So I have been making a, a list of all of the self-published series that I want to binge and then I would probably read them digitally because buying physical copies of self-published books is very expensive. So I will probably read those digitally. Therefore, this one isn't really serving its purpose the same way as it used to because if I'm going to be prioritizing binge reading digital series, then the miscellaneous ones in here aren't going to get as much of a look in because I won't pull from the jar if I'm already reading a digital Book. So I'm going to rejig these. I'm going to go through this one and basically my only purpose of going through this one is I have read a couple of books that are in here that I hadn't pulled from the jar that I read last month. So these need, this one just needs checking and all of the stuff that I have read needs to come out. Then this one I need to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out all of the miscellaneous books. So for example I've got like a contemporary standalone in here or I've got like a romance audiobook in here. They're going to come out of here and they're going to go into my main TBR jar. For those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about, these are my TBR jars. I'll leave one of my uh, TBRs. My January TBR is when I last used these. So I'll leave my January TBR where I have a little run through. I also have a video where I go through what is in the jars. I'll leave that linked as well in case you are interested. But yeah, so all of my standalones and miscellaneous ones are going to go in here now. So this is going to be my miscellaneous jar. This one is going to be my self pub series jar to binge. And this is going to be my physical copies series to binge. So in here I also have two series that are currently on my Kindle that are traditionally published but I have the series digitally which are The Gauntlet and the Fist Beneath by Ian Green. I can't remember what the series is called. And then I also have Brian Naslin's Dragons of Terror I think is what it's called series in here as well. So they're going to stay in there. So all of the series that I own digitally that I want to binge are going in here and all of the series that I own physically that I want to binge are going in here and everything else is going in here apart from the Spanish books which are staying in here but they're staying in here and I have no alterations to make to that one. So I thought you could just you know watch me have a fiddle around with these and um b-roll I guess. Cue the b-roll. Alright, so first jar is done. I have taken some out that I'm going to be using potentially for vlog projects. So I'm going to take the paper out but I'm not going to chuck it. And then if I don't get around to the vlog project or if that one doesn't come up for the vlog project then I'll just put them back in the jar. Then I have taken out the colour purple because I recently found out, found out that Alice Walker, the author of the colour purple, is transphobic and that makes me uncomfortable. Thankfully I did only buy the book secondhand anyway but it makes me a bit uncomfortable. It makes me very conflicted because she's a huge advocate, she's a huge activist, she's someone I really admire and then she's come out as transphobic and that is like, it's the same as like Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie, like it's just so heartbreaking when someone who up until now you've really loved their advocacy and you've loved their agency and you've loved what they have been trying to do with like philanthropically and with their activism only for it to then be like that level of disappointing. So the colour purple's come out. I have read the colour purple before but it was so long ago that instead of putting it in a reread I did put it back in the jar because it's been so long. And then the other one I took out is Rules of Civility because I did read it last month but it wasn't my jar pick. Pull. So let's move on to the next jar. I forgot to mention I also took out a few series that I own either I own in their entirety or they are a binder which I previously put in miscellaneous but I think I'm going to put them in the series jar just because now I'm only pulling one. Reading a binder means that I might be able to pull another one anyway so I'm going to put them in the series jar. All right, we're going to be going through the digital books now and they're going to get distributed into the miscellaneous or they'll stay here on the table and they'll go back in here 
if it is a series that I own in its entirety. So that then later on I can go make this into a digital series jar. Alright, so remaining in here at the moment before I go put more in, we have Broken Heart of Aurelion, which is the first book in the War of the Twelve. Then I have A Touch of Light by Tiago Abdallah, which is the first book in the Ashes of Alvarin series, I think it's called. I have The Way of Adan, which is the first book in the Adan trilogy. Blood of an Exile, which is the first book by Brian Nasland of the Dragons of Terror series. I have The Queen of the Conquered series by Casey and Calendar. I have the Linaria series, which isn't out in its entirety, but I do own all of the books that are out, so I will go binge all of those by L.L. McRae. Then I also have The Gauntlet and the Fist Beneath by Ian Green, and I have Gun Metal Gods, which again, not out in its entirety, but I am a little bit behind on that one, so again will read. So those are the digital books, digital series that I have at the moment and the only one I'm taking out of here is The Keeper Chronicles because I read it last month. So now we're just gonna quickly go through the series chart, make sure that I haven't missed anything or that everything is uh, hunky-dory with uh, putting these in. I've not got duplicates or anything. I have added the Cosmic series, the Once and Future King series, so the Cosmic series by C.S. Lewis, the Once and Future King series by P.H. White. P.H. White. I've added A Song of Ice and Fire because I've read Game of Thrones. I do own all of the books that are out, so if that one comes up, I will just read one book. The same for Dark Tower. I own all of Dark Tower. I'm not overly fussed about reading it, but my husband wants me to read it, so I'm going to read like one book as and when it comes up in the jar. And then I also I also have two that were already like that, which were Discworld and In Death, where if the prompt comes up, I only read one in the series, like the next one in the series, and then the rest of them I binge. So now I have two binge jars, which makes me very happy because I love binge reading series. I am trying to burn through a candle so it frees that up as a jar so I can change one of these out so that they don't all look the same. Um, And I need to change the labels now as well. I think I'm gonna go buy some like nice looking labels. The ones that like, you know, they used to have on like apothecary jars and stuff so I can make it look a bit nicer. But yeah, I just thought I would clue you in on what I'm up to. And yeah, I will come back to you when I have more news on something that I'm reading because I'm not even halfway through this one yet.
Hey guys, so today has been a migraine day. I suffer from them relatively frequently, so it's not surprising. But today was a migraine day. It was a very mild migraine. It was a lot more manageable than some of the ones that I have been having, so that was cool. But um, that did mean that reading digitally was kind of off the cards. I can, but it just, it doesn't help. And obviously when you're in pain, you tend to reach for things that, you know, don't exacerbate that pain or prolong it. <laughs> So um, I chose not to read digitally today. So I haven't made any more progress with teeth, but I did finish The Reindeer People instead. This is definitely the one that I thought I would take longer of the two to read because it is slower paced. So even though they're about the same length, this one is more flowery, it is slower. So I kind of figured I would take a while with this one and then teeth I would fly through because it has an easier writing style. But alas, migraines have dictated that this is the one I was going to finish. This one in the end, I actually, there were a lot of things that I didn't expect off of this book. One of the things is, is that I had a certain expectation in my head of what the mother and son relationship would be. And I guess also expectations of what, of what kind of person the son would be. And that was not really the case. It was a very different relationship dynamic. It was a very different um, character arc and character archetype than I expected, which was very cool because it meant that she didn't just lean into expectations and then this story would be exactly what I was expecting it to be. So for the most part, I, I really appreciate this book. There are definitely some things that I, because I've just finished reading this, there are definitely some things that I'm going to need to compose my thoughts on a little bit more as to how I feel about them. Mostly to do with the plot, the character work, as expected, was absolutely incredible. But when it comes to the plot, there are a couple of things that I think I need to think about. Maybe even the world building that comes, like how that feeds into the plot. I'm not sure. There are some things I need to think about before I can give this a rating. I might run it through core cool power, but again, I think I just need to think about things a little bit before I core cool pile it. So yeah, that's where I am at with this one. As I said, character work was phenomenal. Writing style was phenomenal. That is one book down for this vlog and one book down for Polathon. For Polathon, points wise, I am technically on team reindeer, I think, because of reindeer people. I did consider going on Team Arctic Fox because of blue cover, but this is the only book I have with a blue cover. And Team Reindeer, the prompt is books with S in the title. And while this one doesn't have an S in the title and neither does Teeth, Claws, which is the sequel to Teeth does, and Wolf's Brother does, which is the sequel to this one. So it would garner me more points. So points wise at the moment, I've read a polar fantasy. So that's a snowball. And then this book is over 300 pages. So this book has garnered me four snowballs in total, which is pretty good start for a dinky book. In a readathon, you don't normally get many points for a, for a dinky book. With that being said, I am going to now probably just chill for the rest of the day. I don't know how much more reading I'm gonna get done. I did a lot of like Instagram photos and stuff yesterday. I also did, I have my niece coming to stay with me. So we've been sorting out her bedroom. We're basically, we're trying to like strip it as much as possible so that she can personalize it however she likes. And yeah, I'm really excited for it because I'm really excited to see what she does with the space. So we're stripping that and then I'm, also, because a lot of time in our spare room, the kids use it as a playroom. We don't have that anymore. And we have a conservatory that basically, it was just like the last place when we moved in that didn't get done. Like we put the windows and doors in and just kind of left it. And it's like this giant like enclosed porch. And we've not done anything with this space. And it's got a massive table in there that is like built in. Like it's a concrete table that takes up the whole space. So we've decided that since it's a space that we've just been using as a dumping ground for as long as we've lived here, which is seven years now, we've decided we're gonna clear everything out of there, get rid of the table and turn it into like a kid's space. So like we're gonna put like a little desk in there for them to be able to do like coloring, drawing, etc. A little table for them to play with like Lego and stuff. I've made a chair out of a table and some old cushions for them to sit in. We're gonna put like drawers for their toys and stuff. It's gonna be 
it's going to be cute. I will show you when it's done, which will potentially not be in this vlog, but I'm hoping to have it done by the end of February because my niece comes in early March. So as it currently stands, that's where I'm at. I'm really excited for all of these changes to my house. I like changing up my house, but I think that potentially the amount of dust that I will have probably inevitably inhaled yesterday, cleaning out that conservatory and cleaning out spare room, which are the rooms that get cleaned the least because they are not spaces in use. I feel like the amount of dust I've inhaled has probably contributed to the migraine so I can't continue that today I think that would be silly doing anything that requires it bending over and moving furniture and stuff while my head hurts I think I just need to rest for today which is not what I want to do I'm feeling very productive but I also need to take care of my physical health and it's very annoying but yeah once I have sorted out the kids space like the conservatory the kids space it's nice and light in there as well so it's really nice for the kids but they don't want to go in there at the minute because it's all cluttered and then obviously there's this big table in the way as well so it doesn't feel like it's very spacious so I think they're gonna really appreciate the space once we get rid of the fuck off massive concrete table but yeah I will show you it once it's done I don't know if I'll do a before and after because like the before is just embarrassing but uh, I will show you the end product when we actually get around to it in whichever vlog that is convenient for but yeah that's it for my check-in so I will get back to you preferably when I have finished teeth I don't have that long left of teeth either so hopefully I can finish that tomorrow hopefully my brain will let me and then uh, um hopefully I will have better thoughts on reindeer people if I do I will communicate them to you but for now that's it so I will probably catch you tomorrow I am in my car and it is absolutely chucking it down with rain but I thought I'd take a minute to update you because it's been a day I didn't update you yesterday. So I have now started Wolf's Brother, which I am liking. And then I also have started Claws, which is the second book in the Ice Fjord saga. So I think that my plan for today, once I get home, because at the minute, as you can see, I'm in my car. I am reading Claws while I'm just sat here waiting for my husband to go buy some paint. Once I am home, I'm going to settle down for the day with a nice big coffee and I am just gonna go and read the heck out of these books. Given how I'm going with these books and these books being so dinky, I'm probably going to be finished by like midday tomorrow at this rate. So, and I don't really want to be starting another book. So the latest this will finish is Sunday. Earliest this will finish is as soon as I've finished both books. If I can eke them out a bit better, then all the better. But yeah, that's where I'm at. I'm sorry if the rain's really loud. I have absolutely no idea. You are right by the window as well. So it's probably really loud. I'm really sorry. So far, so good. I am two books down and I am two books in. That makes sense. I don't know if I'm making any sense. Anyway, I am off now. So I will catch you when I'm home and have a bit more progress in these books. Good morning. It is Saturday morning. I didn't check back in with you yesterday. That's my bad. I also talked a big game yesterday of like how I should have everything done by halfway through today. So we're gonna have my teenage niece gonna come and stay with us and we're gonna be doing up her room and I'm so excited for it. But that also means that I need to get everything out of that room so that we can then like go do the whole like Ikea run and get her some stuff. So I'm trying to empty out that room as much as possible. So to get all of the stuff out of that room, because my kids store some stuff in there. I have four kids, they have two bedrooms between them. I have two and two. And they're getting bigger, like they're, they're starting to take up more space. And their rooms are really only good for sleeping in. Like they, they're not particularly big rooms. So like it's, we store their clothes in there, we store their books in there and they sleep in there. So they need space to play. and. Like they play in the living room, but then that means that my teen is not gonna be having a space that she can relax in. We wanted to make a playroom as well because my older kid also likes just some time to chill that isn't like quite so chaotic. So we're, we're turning our conservatory into a playroom so that then we can put all of their toys there and they're easily accessible. I kind of want a Montessori style, anyone who's worked in child care will know what that means. But it's basically, it basically means that the kids can play as independently as possible. So I'm gonna have everything that is like super accessible to them, super easy to put away and tidy up. Everything is organized in a way that is easy to find and easy to manage. I also want to create like a little like desk area for them to do things like drawing, to do their homework, coloring, etc. That means that they don't have to constantly be clearing their stuff away. I want a table for them to get their Lego out and I want a table they can leave their drawing out, somewhere they can dry their paintings and it not be like this multi-layered space. At the minute they do their coloring on the dining table. So then when it's food time, even if they're halfway through something, they need to put it away. And I want them to feel like 
like they don't have to constantly be removing their existence so that we can do like daily tasks like eating i don't know it, it, it's just easier for them i think if they have a space and like i don't mean that they can leave it in a mess but if they are halfway through doing a drawing or coloring or whatever they don't have to clear it away because with little kids once it's cleared away getting it back out remembering what they were in the middle of doing it's a little bit trickier instead of having to clear it away and then put it back they can just leave it out and it will be nicer for them so that's kind of my plan at the moment so we're turning that whole area essentially into a montessori area which i'm really excited for the demolition that has been occurring that started yesterday but yeah so we got home and we did that which meant that i didn't get a lot of reading done however i did get some reading done last night i haven't actually continued anything of claws yet i have i have plans but so i got to page 202 last night and then i just got too tired so i've got 66 pages left of this one. Oh, uh you'll have to forgive the nails i let my daughter do my nails i mean i love them but you know just like <laughs> they are what they are <laughs> but i love it i love that she wanted to do that we did each other's nails it was very cute but yeah so i've got 66 pages of this one left i oh my god just robin hobb writes literally the most miserable stories imaginable they're just they are so depressing so yes it's all very miserable but it's very engaging like i am interested and like i feel strongly about the characters about what's going on about the people I hate, the people I love, people that I'm curious about. So I like it and I feel strongly about it, but it's a very miserable story at the same time. So it's not one that I'm like, oh my God, this is amazing. Cause she's like, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> That's, that's it that's all i got uh obviously i can't really talk about this one either because it is a sequel but i'll finish it out this morning i'm gonna have like a little bit of coffee and, and read this morning before we continue on with some work and then also i'm really sorry if you can hear my kids in the background i have no idea what the camera does or doesn't pick up because there are times where i'm like oh yeah no that's way too faint the camera won't pick it up and it will pick it up and then there are other times where it feels like the kids are practically in the room shouting because that window's so thin and it doesn't pick it up. So if you can hear them, I'm sorry. But yeah, I, I'm i excited to finish it. So I'm gonna go do that now. And then hopefully I will make some progress with claws tonight. So I will show you the desecration of my house. And then afterwards I'll just check in once I am done with both this and claws, I guess now. So it's a bit later on and my kids have all gone next door. So I thought I could show you now while there's gonna be no risk of kids running around. But this is where we're at. I didn't get it before the table got knocked out, but this is all that remains of the table. So here is where I'm gonna put like the kid's desk. I'm gonna make one here with like a countertop. And then down here is gonna be the whole play area. Like I said, I'm gonna do it in like a Montessori style. I made a chair over there. I think it looks super cute. And yeah, I think it will be nice for them. So, you know, this is your before. And then hopefully by March, I can give you an after. Good morning. It's Sunday morning. It's cold today. I'm having a nice slow morning. If you can hear kids, I apologize. They are watching TV, sometimes get excited. Um, it's It's a nice cold day, so I thought, I'll come in here and I will wrap up everything that I have read and then hopefully we'll start on to my next TBR. So let's wrap up this vlog. Putting the coffee down for you. I finished Wolf's Brother. I ended up giving this one like a really high four star. I really liked how it wrapped up. I mean, I didn't have much left anyway, so like it didn't really alter my opinions. I really like how it wrapped up, though it was miserable. <laughs> I really liked the way that the characters worked in this and how complex the characters were. I feel like they evolved even more in this one from the first one. I don't know if I feel like these needed to be two separate books or if it could be like one book that has like two parts to it but it was it was a good time i have strong feelings about the characters but i don't know if i have strong feelings about the book that's why it's not got five stars because i was really interested in the book and i was really 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 emotionally invested in the characters i don't know if i was invested in the story at all i mean it's not one of those books anyway it's a character driven series so it is very much like me being interested in the characters is the point i don't know i have odd feelings about these in the sense of like 
I care so much about these characters and at the same time the books don't feel like oh my god that's a new favourite so I'm assuming it's more to do with the plot and the story than it is to do with the characters because I feel very strongly about the characters especially Tilu I love her but yeah so that wraps up this series so we've got a like solid four star and then 4.5 stars I think or maybe they're both 4.5 enjoyed this series I'm really glad to have finished it to have read it to have fallen back in love with Robin Hobb outside of Realm of the Elderlings because I did have a rough time with Soldier Sun last year and I do want to give that another go but I am glad that I loved these and that her character work still permeates even though the writing style was so different like this one was a lot more flowery it was a lot more literary it's also historical fantasy as opposed to epic fantasy it's also just slower moving because it's historical fantasy it's more secluded it's more about just this this group of people instead of like a whole like continent wide politics thing going on that she's got with Realm of the Elderlings so me loving her characters and loving her writing was really lovely and it was so lovely to fall back in love with this author it's made me a lot more excited to try and give soldier sun another go as well so yeah i'm really happy that i like these and that they brought me joy but also so much pain and sorrow i need to iron out my thoughts i need to figure out what it is that made these not a new favorite because i don't know but they are beautiful and i loved them and i am Glad to have read them. And then as for the Icefield series, Zaya Feli delivers on exactly what you want her to deliver. If you have read one of her books, you will like the rest of them. Not because they are the same, because they all feel very unique, but because they have this layer of, of comfort, this layer of you knowing what you're getting into. And I don't mean comfort in the sense of like, it's a comfortable read, because there are some very difficult things in the books they're not necessarily written in a particularly traumatic way she has a very accessible writing style these are definitely ones that are they're adult in themes and the things they discuss but they have a very approachable writing style that fans of young adult and new adult would still be able to get on board with and they have young enough characters to be relatable but yeah they, to me they feel like accessible adult books and i'm really looking forward to reading the only zaya Feli i've not read now which is wild sky because yeah i really enjoyed this series i liked the characters Issa is a very interesting character because I just I love I love his soul and I love the way that throughout this series there are times where you worry that you're going to be losing this kid that you love from the very beginning and then yeah I don't know I just the characters in it I get really attached to Zaya Faye's characters really quickly I get super invested in her romances as well and they are always like queer centric so yeah I'm really really looking forward to getting to Wild Sky this was a really good time I'm really glad to have gotten into Zaya Feli thank you Kaz for the recommendation and yeah that was that's me so I've read Teeth and Claws which I gave four stars to each of them and then I've read The Reindeer People and Wolf's Brother I can't remember if The Reindeer People I gave four or 4.5 stars to and then Wolf's Brother I gave 4.5 stars to but fantastic Polathon I have had a really good time with Polathon I've collected a hell of a lot of snowballs I need to go count them actually that is it for me so next vlog is going to be my Pharaoh Fair vlog where I read fantasy romance. If you are interested in that then come check it out. But that is all from me for today so thank you ever so much for watching and I'll hopefully catch you in another one soon.